Hey chemists, we just finished our discussion of gases and liquids for the kinetic molecular theory. Now we're moving on to solids. After this video, you should be able to describe the properties of solids according to the kinetic theory and explain differences and similarities between ionic and molecular solids. In the solid state, the particles have the lowest amount of kinetic energy. The intermolecular forces in the solid state are higher than those in the intermolecular forces in a liquid or gaseous states. The particles in a solid state are said to be in fixed positions, similar to what you see in the drawing on the right hand side. We often describe particle motion as if the particles are vibrating in place and these particles do not have the ability to flow. There are two major types of solids. The first is a crystalline solid. These are solids that contain particles that are arranged in an orderly repeating pattern. For example, sodium chloride or table salt. An amorphous solid is the second type. This is a solid that lacks order among the particles that make it up. An example of this would be glass or silicon dioxide. Here are two pictures that you can compare side by side so that you can understand why it's called amorphous and why it's called crystalline. On the left hand side, you can see there's really no orderly arrangement of the silicon dioxide molecules. And on the right hand side, you can see that the table salt is very orderly. It's a nice order pattern. And so that's why we say the one on the left is amorphous and then the one on the right is crystalline. Now there are types of crystalline and amorphous solids. The first one is ionic and this is the one that you're most familiar with. We say that ionic compounds are those that contain both a metal and a nonmetal, and it is the attraction of both the positive and negative ions within the crystal lattice that increases the likelihood that these substances are going to be in the solid state. Ionic substances are always going to be crystalline solids. And it's ultimately because of the strong intermolecular forces of attraction that make it very difficult for this solid to break apart. A molecular solid is where you have two nonmetals. And this is where we're going to see that covalent bonds are the things that ultimately will make up the substances within the individual particles but there's weak attractive intermolecular forces between the molecules. So usually remember molecular compounds are those that are made up of nonmetals only. So within the molecule, you have strong covalent bonds, but between molecules, the intermolecular forces are very weak. The intermolecular forces for ionic solids are much stronger than those in molecular solids. And typically you can see these be amorphous or crystalline. Let's talk a little bit about phase changes for solids. A solid will typically melt when the particles in the solid state have enough kinetic energy to break free from their fixed positions. The temperature at which the substance will melt is called the melting point, or it is abbreviated M period, P period. Since the intermolecular forces are stronger in ionic solids, they will often have higher melting points than in molecular solids. Sublimation is defined as the conversion of a solid to a gas with basically skipping over the liquid state. The reverse process going from gas to solid is called deposition. Sublimation will occur whenever the vapor pressure of a solid is greater than or equal to the surrounding atmospheric pressure. Your vapor pressure has to be greater than the atmosphere pressure. Usually this will occur near or at room temperature. The vapor pressure of solids, however, is usually much lower than the vapor pressure of liquids. And this makes sense because these primarily have stronger intermolecular forces of attraction. Vapor pressure will increase, however, if the solid is heated, much like we talked about with liquids. However, most substances will typically melt before the vapor pressure will equal the atmospheric pressure. That is why sublimation is so difficult. 
it is often easier to get a solid to sublime by lowering the atmospheric pressure, similar to when we talked about boiling. It's easier to get a substance to boil if you decrease the atmospheric pressure. Dry ice or a solid carbon dioxide will sublime at room temperature and pressure because it has a very high vapor pressure due to the weak intermolecular forces that hold the solid together. So that was very short and sweet about solids. I hope this video helped you to be able to make sense of all the different types of interactions that you will see with solids. Please begin Worksheet 5. Thanks so much for watching.